What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Sports Scoop. Today, I'm going to be talking about the week one game between the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Jets, and it's a tough one, really tough one. I'm a Jets fan, and they it was a tough loss. Obviously, the Jets lost to the Ravens week one, 24 to 9, and it was a story of really how kind of the offense just couldn't get it going the whole game until, not really even until it was too late. It was really garbage time where the Ravens were playing prevent defense, but it just wasn't a good game. Not at all. It was really, really tough. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to go by quarter, just chronologically, just talk to you about my thoughts on the game. Obviously, pretty deflated because I think, I was, although the Jets were going in with a backup quarterback and their left tackle out, which are two of the most important positions on the offense, it still felt like they could have done a lot more, especially with how some of the players or some of the units look at the defense, how they how well they played. And felt like it was just a missed opportunity. So let's just get into it, starting off with the first quarter. And I think it was really a microcosm of the full game. It was really a game where the Jets just couldn't get anything going. They weren't moving the ball at all. I think the only really solid plays you had were a few like big run plays by Michael Carter. He had, he had, I think, a very good game. He was really um, attributed to a lot of the actual offense that we had this week. And he played played pretty well. The uh, run blocking, I thought, was actually pretty solid today. I think the run blocking was good, but the pass blocking obviously wasn't Flacco. And this is going to be a continuous theme throughout this video. He just he can't move in the pocket. I think when you see a lot of old quarterbacks, some of them that are old, they're still good because they're mobile, or some of them are good because they at least have a pocket presence. And Flacco, he is tall, which is commanding, but he can't move. He's a statue in the pocket. And when you're going against a relentless pass rusher like Baltimore, who love to bring pressure and can bring pressure, and we're going up with a, a rookie right tackle, uh, Max Mitchell, who, to be fair, I don't think he fared necessarily terribly. I mean, his first start, didn't hear his name too many times, which is always a good thing with the offensive line. But the point is, it was just a game where Flacco just didn't move around. And I know, obviously, you don't want to attribute it to one guy because I think the Jets, a lot of guys could have played well. But I think one of the big concerns just was Flacco. And I think with Zach Wilson, who some people were trying to make this dumb argument that Zach Wilson was some – for some reason, not as good as Flacco, which I think, I hope this game proves it's just not true at all. But I think just really his lack of pocket movement really kind of just limited the Jets to just kind of screens, quick plays, trying to get it. And it was another reason why I think guys like, we saw a lot of three tight end sets to kind of protect him better. Cause obviously again, he just can't move in the pocket. And that's why we saw less of guys like Garrett Wilson, who could have really made a difference. And it was just overall just not good enough from Flacco. And I think maybe not even the fact that saying not good enough implied that he could have been better. I don't know if he can play better than this at this point. He's an old quarterback. It's not, it's just what happens with old quarterbacks. They just like, but especially a quarterback like Flacco just can't move in the pocket. It was just continuous, just staying in the pocket when, when he had, he was accurate when he actually had time to throw, not necessarily when he had time to throw, but when, he had like a perfectly clean pocket, had somewhere to step into. But if there was collapsing pressure, he just couldn't move. It was just too much. And I think in the first quarter, we really saw that the Jets weren't able to convert a single third down the first quarter, I believe. But going on to the positive, the defense, which is really, again, a microcosm, they played really, really well. I think one of the more promising things, obviously the defense in general, but the run defense, which really struggled last year, looked pretty good. They look. They did a good job holding um, Lamar in check. We really did a good job bottling up guys like Kenyon Drake and Mike Davis in the first, and it was just not really much for them to do. And I think the only reason why they scored a field goal in that quarter was because of the fact that, again, Flacco just turning the ball over. It, it was a pick to – I don't remember who, uh, who, but it was because Lawrence Cager slipped on the in route, and it just didn't – it just no chance. Flacco probably threw it high anyway. I think that was getting picked no matter what, but he just – it was just a bad quarter of offense football. And it's just, it's annoying because it's the same thing with the Jets every single year. You just get it like, oh, this year, like it could be different. But the issue is just the offense every year. It starts out slow. There's nothing. The offense can't get anything going. They look like they haven't played together all year. And they always look like they're rusty, which is weird because they're practicing every day. But again, maybe it's different with, maybe it's different with Zach Wilson. I don't know, but it, it wasn't promising at all. And now going on, Going on to the second quarter, it was, yeah, it just, um, well, I mean, it's not much different. It was just the Ravens scored a touchdown this time because it was, I believe, that was the drive that, that was the quarter that Brandon Mann shanked his, like, 20-yard punt. And there was just, again, a little bit of ball movement. Oh, yeah, Greg Zerline did miss a field goal in that quarter. He 
made up for it later, like towards the end, but he missed a quarter early, uh, a field goal earlier when we we're moving the ball. And again, another, like, again, considering it's the Jets, it's a minor issue given the amount of issues, but the kicker just, we haven't had a good kicker in a while. And I think having Pinheiro and having him do well, and if you looked at Zerline last year, even the past few years, he hasn't necessarily even been that good. I mean, he's got a big leg. Yeah, sure. But he isn't consistent enough. And Pinheiro isn't that consistent either, but he's at least, He's at least better than I think I'd rather have a consistent kicker who like from 40, 45 is like more automatic than a guy who can at least gives you a chance when it's 60 plus. And I know Zerline can, but I just don't like that like risk, uh, risk reward. So I just, he didn't, it wasn't a good game from him. He missed a field goal. He missed an extra point as well towards the end when it was garbage time, but still again, not promising at all. Um, I think, Again, one of the only promising things I'd say about this is that, again, Michael Carter, he was kind of the, he was the offense. I think him, uh, Garrett Wilson towards in garbage time again, which again, another player who I just don't understand. I know we had to go into more like heavy sets to kind of just protect Joe Flacco. It's just immobileness, but at the same time, you've got to get your best players on the field. I think with um, some of those screens we saw to Barry, I think we could have saw some of those to Wilson because again, you saw when, Guys like Wilson, Moore, Barrios have the ball in their hands. They're very dangerous players, but we just couldn't get to, get it to them the right way. And I think that has to go on Michael Floor, who I really like. I think he's a. I think last year he showed a lot of promise. But we just didn't see that much from him. Um, uh, week one, and it was just was it was an issue. I think um, yeah, it, it's tough doing this because just it's the same storyline. I feel like every year it's just you don't. You go in with, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't think any year from this year, I think it's been the most hyped for a jet season. Well, actually maybe since 2019, we got Le'Veon Bell. But the point is, I think we thought we were doing it the right way. And there is at least like, say like, I, w- I was going into this, I, I predicted the Ravens to win. And I thought they would do a good job on defenses again. I think um, the issue was that their, I think, the, I think the issue was that their defense was again going to kind of overwhelm them. But I think Flacco, I thought, I thought he was going to be a bit more like calm and collect in the pocket. It's not like he was shaking necessarily. He just didn't feel the pressure, not the whole game. He didn't. And it was just a continuous issue because when he did, and by the time, like when he's throwing under pressure, it was just like, it was ducks. He wasn't throwing any, he just doesn't, wasn't throwing the ball very well. And again, I think that also goes on to our offensive line. I think I have hope for our weapons. I think, Wilson, if we hopefully use him more, I like Corey Davis. He did well after, I, again, garbage time, but he did well after like his initial struggles. I think Elijah Moore, love him. I think he's still a beast. Barrios, I think is a great four option. I think, I hope we use him a lot. I think we will use him a lot. And I love our tight ends too. The issue is, the, the issue is I think we just didn't, some of them we didn't use in the right way because we we're scared about their inexperience. Like, come on, we're the Jets. We don't have enough like, good veterans to say, oh yeah, they need to learn under these guys. I think the best way to kind of help them learn is to learn in game. And I think Wilson, we saw when he had the ball in his hands, he was dangerous at times. And I hope we can, we go into um, week two against the Browns where he's at least starting. Cause I think he is already as a rookie, one of our most important playmakers, but that was the second quarter. I kind of just went on a tangent about uh, the game as a whole, but yeah, that was the second quarter ended with a made field goal. Obviously that, um, Great throw by Lamar to um, Devin DuVernay, who had a t- huge game against us. Of course he did. And that was a great throw over Bryce Hall, who I think he had good coverage there, but he just doesn't have that good ball skills. And if you, and when you throw like that against him, he's not going to make a play on it. So 10, three Ravens at the half. And there was still a bit of hope, especially when we stopped in the first drive. But then again, it's just, just nothing, just nothing materializes. I think um, the second half, Right after we had a stop, just a quick, I don't know if it was a three and out. I think we might have gotten one first down because of a penalty. But other than that, it was just nothing. I think it was just a few traded stops. But then, obviously, the Ravens, they were eventually going to um, blow the game over, um, blow the game open. They made a drive. They went on a drive. And again, their second touchdown to Duvernay, I think, um, he crosses the um, face of Jordan Whitehead, who I think, in the box had a pretty good game. He was definitely instrumental. I think I love some of the, I love the energy he brought to the defense. And again, you can't blame the defense at all. This, um, this game, I think 
I can't really name other than I'd say LaMarcus Joyner because he got cooked on that long touchdown to um, Bateman. I can't really name a defensive player that did particularly bad. I think Sauce was good as advertised. He played really well, had a nice PBU of Mark Andrews. You saw DJ Reed had an interception. He was pretty good as well, in my opinion. I think Michael Carter II was also good. Linebackers, Quan was really good. I think CJ was solid. Um, Quincy was good as well. The defensive line, they were they were getting pressure early. They were doing a good job, I think, early. I think towards the end again, once you once you're on the field so many times, only so much you can do. But I thought Jermaine was solid. Didn't see enough of Quinn Williams. I think again, it's probably due to rotation, probably because I don't think he just had that good of a game. But yeah, I think overall, overall on the defense, I can't really point fingers. I think they had a good game, but when the offense just keeps going three and out, three and out, three and out, or just one drive and then three and out. It's just too much to handle. So that was the long touchdown there. And the Jets' offense, again, they did nothing. I think one of the concerns I had was that, oh, they're going to turn the ball over. But I w- almost wish that they kind of at least took more shots. And, again, that's probably what's going to happen with Zach Wilson. Of course, I could take it back if, like, Wilson has another, like, four interception game against the, like he did against the Patriots. But, yeah, I think we just didn't take enough shots. And I think at least with Wilson – even if he is like, he isn't, he isn't, first of all, he's not a worse passer than Flacco at this point in his career. And maybe he has, he's not as, he's not as tall. Doesn't he's a bit shaky in the pocket, but at least he gives us mobility and it's going to give us a bit more than those screens and slants and flat routes and whatever, all, all that Joe Flacco could really do the whole game. So I think he at least, he gives us a better chance. And I think most teams after seeing that would rather face Joe Flacco than face Zach Wilson. So I think, I mean, I don't know how he's gonna look. Um, there was it looked like he was having a solid training camp, did struggle in preseason in his first two drives, but yeah, I think obviously that was a really disappointing um quarter. And then going finally on to the fourth quarter, I mean once um Lamar just like I think actually the Bateman touchdown might have been the third two, I forget, but once basically once that Bateman touchdown happened, I switched to red zone. It was over, but we, I mean, I switched back and forth a bit. I saw that they were kind of moving the ball, but obviously that was garbage time. The Ravens just didn't want to have big play over the top, which honestly they probably still could have played press coverage. Flacco wasn't going to get that because the pressure, because he just doesn't have the arm to do it. And yeah, it was, we were able, he was able to move the wall a bit in garbage time, but I think he'll probably start week two, which again, it's easy to say, Oh, white or Shreveler are better, but, We don't really know. I know White had that good game against the Bengals, but other than that, it was just, I mean, he didn't look in his other games. So I I think Flacco is uh, the lesser evil of the three. I mean, I like Trevor. I like Trevor, but he's obviously not ready for an actual NFL game. But um, yeah, fourth quarter was really just the Ravens just running down the clock. DJ Reed did have a nice interception of Lamar. uh, Garrett Wilson, he did show up a bit more. Again, Michael Carter played well. Reese Hall, he did fumble. Although Michael Carter did drop that go um, touchdown, that walk in touchdown. I guess it would have made it a bit closer, it would have made it a tiny bit interesting. But let's be real, the Ravens they didn't really do much on offense either. But they just they were obviously they had the better quarterback. They had at least they at least had some unpredictability. I think that's what won them the game. They're a good team. Um, they're probably, I think they'll make the playoffs, but at the same time, the fact that we couldn't really even compete the whole game is just disappointing. As you can hear by my voice, it's just deflating, but uh, yeah, I think the defense will play that way all year. I think we'll win some games, but um, I would have hoped we could have at least been more competitive. I know it's Flacco. I know it's a backup, but you need to see at least a bit more urgency in that team and I think week one was really disappointing. I hope, I think the coaching staff needs to look at itself. I think um, some of the guys that were in, weren't in, were the wrong decisions. Garrett Wilson definitely needs to see more time. Um, I think really some of the play call, some of the play calling, again, I feel for the floor at the same time as I'm annoyed with him because I think some play calling could have been better. It was too predictable, but at the same time, what can you do when you have kind of a, a statue like Flacco in the pocket? So overall, frustrating game. I think Ravens clearly deserve to win. Move on to week two against the Browns to back up on backup, but no, it's going to be, I think it'll be easier even though we're away, but 
we'll have to see. But that is it for the video. If you did enjoy my just depressedness, just make sure to subscribe. I've got three other hosts, Kian, Charlie, and Dylan. They make great videos. So if you don't like me, make sure to watch them. They they're great. I'm sure we'll have a couple other uploads out. And um, yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.